welcome to this EN Engage session. My name is Ruth Carter and I'm guest editor of Exhibition News. Now there's that lovely saying that whilst sales or content may be king, marketing is the power behind the throne. And as we look to encourage exhibitors and visitors back to our shows, marketing has never been more important. So I'm delighted that my guest today is one of those powers. I'm delighted to introduce Helen Coetzee. Helen has been senior, a senior marketeer for some of the biggest companies around, including Informa and EMAP. Um, she's now currently co-founder and director at MPG, the marketing consultancy and digital marketing agency. So welcome, Helen. Thank you very much, Ruth. It's lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. Now, Helen and I have worked together in the past before. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you are expecting some huff and marketing spiel coming at you, you shall be disappointed because Helen is fantastic at practical, tactical, as well as strategic advice. So, uh, Helen, no pressure today. Let's kick off then. Um, as we said at the beginning, we're sort of engaged now, we're ready and we're, we're desperate for live events, but that's what we do. It's going to be a little bit more challenging encouraging exhibitors and visitors to come back and be live again. What advice would you be giving companies and individuals, marketeers within those organisations about how they can make that happen? Well, if we think about the role of marketing, it's all about communication and persuasion. So the same way that we had to persuade people to engage with us digitally, um, starting about 12 months ago, um, and pull out all the stops to help them understand what they could get online, how to engage and network, how to consume content, um, this, the reverse will now apply um, in terms of persuading people that in-person is at beneficial to them, advantageous for various reasons that they might have forgotten or might not see as, as much value in as they did before, um, and also make them feel safe, may that make them understand what they can expect. You know, people of one of the things I heard during the COVID pandemic early on um, was how fragile companies and people feel in a, a time of a pandemic. Um, and a, the job of the marketer is to make them feel safe in how they will be consuming your products and engaging with you. Um, and that's where the messaging comes in. So all the benefits of returning to live venues, um, all the things that they can get at live shows that they can't get digitally, and then also the um, being able to just feel safe and, and understand what to expect when they turn up at your show. There's, there's a, it feels to me a very fine line between providing loads and loads of information about how it's going to work in practice and what the process is of when you're there. And the flip side of that is scaring the bejesus out of people. How do you manage that fine line? What, what is too much? What's not enough? What do you think? Well, I think um, you can't over communicate, you know, communicate, 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 put every all the information in every format you can. So on the website, in emails, in downloadable documents, and also in video. Video is an incredibly powerful tool um, where you can, for quite low budgets and quite simple um, approaches and scripts, create some very simple explainer videos for people um, so that they know that, you know, you can put a face and a voice um, to your brand and to your event. Um, and also so that they can really understand um, by some visual techniques you can use in your video, what it is that they can expect when they when they attend your show or exhibit at your show. And are there any, have you got any good practical examples that people could look at with regards to that? Um, one of the best ones I've seen recently um, is from TXF Media. They're a, mainly a conference and, and subscriptions business, not a trade show business, but they've done a really great little explainer video um, that is very entertaining too, actually. Um, and it's all, I think all the um, actors in the video are staff um, who work for TXF Media. Um, so they, you know, obviously it didn't cost them a fortune to get loads of actors on board and the script was really simple, the concept was simple, just a bit of creativity from the team and, you know, relating to, to how their audience might be feeling. And this explainer video was interestingly to get people online and engaging well online with their events. So it wasn't about getting them into, into exhibition venues, but you could use exact, exactly the same concept. That's a, yeah, it's a really interesting point because the, uh, I was thinking about my experience you know, when you go on Virgin, only fly on Virgin Airlines, and rather than having a really, really dull 
uh, safety uh, video, they've actually made that quite fun and amusing and there's a story and actually you engage and you don't realise you're learning, uh, but you're listening and you're engaging. So, I mean, that's a really good message if we're trying to get what is essentially quite, you know, not necessarily complicated, but important information across. If there's some storytelling and some, some colour and humour in there, then that's not a bad way to engage. Of course, entertainment never, you know, never goes amiss in these videos. And remembering that they are consume, people are consuming these videos on their phones, on their tablets, and on their desktops. And actually, a lot of that video consumption happens on mobile phones. Um, so thinking about that format when you're creating these um, these resources is important too. What other things do marketeers need to be thinking about? What are the, some of the basics that that we need to be revisiting? Um, well, interestingly, um, what we've seen through COVID um, is that the organizations that supported their marketers as strategic function, as well as a tactical function, um, have actually fared a lot better um, in terms of how they were able to pivot towards digital and now how they're being able to return to in-person events. Um, so I think the advice I would give um, a CEO, or MD, um, and marketers is, you know, be be really brave about, you know, fighting the corner for strategic marketing. And that doesn't change. The pandemic hasn't changed what a marketing strategy should look like in terms of its framework. So it's about defining objectives. It's about knowing your audience. It's about understanding the value proposition, the benefits, the USP. It's about knowing how you're going to use your different channels to reach your audience members and really being quite structured and disciplined about creating that strategy and then executing very well. Obviously, tactics are incredibly important too, but the two should sit side by side. So, so I would advise um, marketers and, and businesses to don't be tempted to um, grab the latest shiny bit of tech that is being kind of waved waved at you because there's a lot of new shiny tech with COVID. There's a lot of new kind of tools that, and, and organizations that promise to give you a very you know, quick fix to all your problems. And they generally don't do that. Um, and it takes you a while to figure out that they're not going to work. So, you know, stick to the basics, stick to the fundamentals, create a solid strategy and be very, very practical in how you execute that. And most of these areas are things that you know quite well already. You just need to do them more thoroughly and you need to do them better, like web optimizing your website, getting some good emails out, having a strong database. Those are absolutely key. And obviously social media is becoming more important um, now than it ever has been. So those are the areas to focus on. The social media piece is interesting because there is so much chatter going on at the moment and it is almost the default marketing tool for, for organizations. How do you make sure that you cut through the, the chatter and aren't just another contributor to the, the white noise? Um, so I think there's probably about, there's a lot of things you can do, but I think three that really make a difference um, are number one, the brand. Make sure your brand and the visual identity of your brand and the way your brand comes across in the images and the, and the imagery on your social posts is really recognizable. Um, so that you can cut through the noise just purely by how recognizable your brand is on social. So people know, know it's you, know to look out for you. Um, secondly, it's um, to do with the number of posts that you put out, obviously, and the amount of engagement you you, you put into, into social. Um, volume is absolutely key with social. You, you can't do social in a, you know, in a, in a quiet, small way. Um, you do need to put a lot of effort and, and, and get out there and get in front of people quite a lot. And that's a combination of putting out posts as well as putting out um, engaging and liking and sharing, um, you know, your key stakeholders, stuff, your advocates, your influencers. Um, and a key part of that also in, in that point is the, is making sure you've got some good content going out. So product-led messages about your exhibition, um, about what you can offer, but also some articles from speakers some you know, some materials from your, your exhibitors, that kind of thing. So, and then the third thing I would say is, is get amplifying your message, getting the right people to share your content and your messages and your post, posts on social media. Um, so you need to do quite a lot of work in making good friends um, who are advocates, who are influencers, who are your stakeholders like speakers and sponsors, even attendees who are super fans of yours, who you know, have attended your show for the last 10 years, activate them, make friends with them, incentivize them, motivate them to share your stuff on social because social really 
takes off when people in your network and people in your community are sharing your stuff to their networks because that adds credibility and it adds reach adds reach and all those other good things that you need so i know when you and i've worked together before you've always been a, a great advocator of this principle of message and medium um you know, and those are really really central i worry slightly everything you say just resonates and makes really good sense there's just a slight worry around the lots of volume and i can see some of the less experienced folks saying it doesn't matter what I do as long as I pump stuff out. How do you relate that message and medium back to uh, the volume piece and making sure you're getting the right messages out? That comes down to measurement. So as long as you're measuring what you're doing and it's having enough impact, you should keep doing it or do more of it. Um, so the whole point of measuring the marketing metrics you should be putting in place, every bit of marketing you do should be measured. You should, and that's the beauty of digital marketing is you should be able to, if you've set up your MarTech and tracking and digital marketing correctly, um, you should be able to measure absolutely everything you do. And you can get a really good sense of what's getting traction, what's getting engagement, what's driving um, registrations, what, you know, all of those good things, um, and be able to then double down on the stuff that's working well and just stop doing the things that you know, that, that aren't working, um, you will find that everything you do doesn't work. Not everything you do is going to have an impact. But if you're measuring, you can very quickly identify what those things are that aren't working and stop doing them and do more of the things that are. How do you get, to, how do you get that balance between, I've tried something, it doesn't work, I'll stop doing it. In some instances, however, the, the other side is I've tried something it hasn't worked I just need to try it again and then it might work is there is there a, an easy way of of deciding when you should stop there's nothing easy I know but um I would say it's probably a, a mixture of art and science there and art does play quite a big part when you're looking at marketing metrics you need to interpret them you need to apply some good judgment you need to apply some you know some of the experience you've had in the past and you know get there'll be a lot of people in your team who've, who've got experience that can be applied. So data doesn't in itself give you the truth and the answers you need. They do need to be interpreted through a veil of experience and common sense and, and, and thoughtfulness around what, what that, you know, what the metrics are telling you and what the context is of those metrics. Just going one, one more time then about thinking about how we communicate with our audience. Is there a, an easy way of, of an easy me not measurement or an easy tool that you can use that says this is how I need to be thinking about what my customers want when I'm communicating? Um, we recommend um, using a stripped down version of a persona development exercise. So there's a lot of, you know, quite complex, quite time consuming persona work that a lot of brands can do that is quite important if you have the time and if you have the budget to do that. But if you're working against the clock, then you can you can strip back quite a lot of that and just go to the basic principles of, you know, create a, a document that in it includes who your target audience is, what are the problems you're solving for them, what motivates them to solve those problems, and then how can you connect what you are delivering to those to that that problem those problems and the solutions to those problems so connecting your features to the problems you're solving gives you the benefits and the usps that you need to to define and once you know what those are for your particular event and your particular audience and they might differ by different audience groups or they might differ obviously by visitors to exhibitors define them just you know have them really succinctly um defined and and have really clear statements in a shared document that your whole team is using and just amplify you know get those messages out in every single bit of communication that that you send um, and there's no one perfect way to 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 create messaging um, it all depends on your audience and your product it's about connecting the customer need with what it is that you have to solve that need and when we were chatting recently, you talked about this lovely concept of, of jobs to be done, which I thought was so simple and so effective. Do you want to just uh, share with the group, just talk a little bit about that? 
Thanks for reminding me, Ruth. Yes, so jobs to be done is a simple, um, it's kind of a model or framework of working out how to define um, what a customer need is in the first place. So jobs to be done is simply in the B2B context or even the B2C context um, for the individual who you want to engage in and make your product relevant to, what is the job they're trying to get done that your product can help them do? So your product and your solution, whether it's visiting a show or exhibiting at a show, would help them um, achieve a better result from their job by making, helping them do their job faster, helping them do their job better, helping they do, them do their job for better outcomes, um, saving them time, saving them money, making them time, making them more money, all of those things that I think we've known about for quite some time. But if you can really define very specifically for each of your audience group um, types, what job you're helping them get done and then relate your product to those jobs, then you want a real kind of winning streak in terms of your messaging. I think that's, for me, that's one of the, the biggest things I've heard for some time. It's so simple. And you've talked a lot about... Um, a lot of the things you've talked about have been really back to basics, but actually, uh, I keep hearing there's nothing new under the sun. We've got to be doing what we do and do it even better. But if you can overlay some of those new ways of, of thinking, then that's, that's a smart way of operating. Absolutely. And I think what's interesting is that these... Uh, these ways of thinking are used quite extensively in other industries and they tend not to be used so much in the events industry because marketers in the events industry tend to be often quite bogged down with operational elements of their roles um, and they don't get the kind of breathing room or the space or the support to to be strategic marketers, which involves more of the messaging, more of understanding, you know, what are the motivations, what are the jobs to be done, and then how do you apply that messaging through all of your different channels. They get very much focused on the tactics and sending out lots of emails and doing things without really um, having the foundations in place to make those things as effective as they should be. You, you mentioned the, the D word, data, uh, earlier. Um, Everywhere we go, we're hearing about the importance of data, and that's a massive word. Um, and actually, sometimes you know, for organisations, I really must get my arms around my data, I really must improve this, and data is the new commodity, it's the new language of commerce. It's almost so big and so broad, it's, it's impossible to, to deal with. What's your take on how organisations should be structuring thinking around the, the whole data commodity? Not to get daunted by data. So data is enabling more than anything. And it does, you're absolutely right, Ruth, it means a lot of different things. So it could be the contacts on your database. It could be the, the web analytics in your, you know, in your Google Analytics set up on your website. It could be what your consumers are doing at your, uh, what your visitors are doing at your show. Um, so there's no point trying to get your arms around all the data that you possibly can and then do something with it. Um, there are always limitations to what you can do. And more importantly, you don't need to do everything with all your data all the time. Um, you need to define your objectives. What are you trying to achieve? And then deconstruct your data and work out which elements of your data you really need to focus on. And a lot of success in marketing actually comes from focus. So if you can be really brave about ignoring the things that aren't important and just really zoning in on the things that are. So for example, it might be growing your database of relevant contacts within a certain group of customers. And if you know that's going to unlock your growth for you or 50% of your growth for you, make that 50% of the, you know, of, of the importance to in, in relation to all the other things you're doing in your marketing. Um, and it's, about, it's really about defining those very particular data points and those very particular areas of data that give you the outcomes you need um, and being very specific about joining the dots about how the investment is going and your time is going to result in the outcomes that you need rather than tr just trying to do a lot of stuff with data. And that sort of comes back to your point at the beginning of tactical strategic tactical and how there is that that continuous circle of feeding one to the next absolutely so strategy and tactics live side by side you don't do strategy for six months and then stop and do tactics for six months they definitely both need to be done um, concurrently and continuously so as you deploy ta tactics 
you measuring how they're working and then you feeding those findings back into your strategy. And um, as you de develop your strategy and deploy it, um, you work out what the next step is to improve your strategy. So what we always recommend to marketers is create a plan, create a strategy, go for that strategy, really, you know, um, focus on executing it very well, but be prepared to change your strategy and change your plan if the results uh, are telling you to do so, or if circumstances change. So it's about really being very, that's what being agile is all about, really. It's being agile is not about not having a plan and just making it up as you go along. And, you know, just each day kind of creating a new list of to do's without really thinking about how those are joining up across time. Um, being agile is about having a strategy, having a plan, but in your plan, knowing that you can change your plan and what that takes and, and how to do that to get the best results and why you change your plan. And you change your plan if the metrics tell you to do that or if circumstances change. I love this. I've got it written up my wall here. Move fast, break things, learn, repeat. And it's that continual you know, test. If it works, great. If it doesn't work, stop it, move on. And that's a key thing in marketing, isn't it? It is. It's interesting. I think it was Mark Zuckerberg who said, um, we move fast and break things, you know, in the early days, days of Facebook, that was their philosophy. That was their kind of statement of this is how we do things. We move fast and break things. But then I do believe um, a few years ago, uh, I think when Facebook turned 10 or something similar, um, they changed their, um, you know, motto or mantra, or whatever you want to call it. And their new one is move fast with stable infra. And what that means is stable infrastructure. And what that means is have a strategy and have good marketing operations set up. MarTech needs to be good. Your database needs to be good. Your infrastructure around, you know, infrastructure includes a messaging strategy as well. What we just, you know, what I just uh, talked about in terms of being clear about what your benefits and USP are, um, that's infrastructure. You use that to create marketing and deploy it very well. Um, so I think that's that's probably a little bit more um, helpful, I think, for marketers these days who have to have very strong infrastructure to be able to do good marketing and, you know, data, digital, MarTech, all those types of things. So one last question then, um, you know, the, the role of the marketeer is going to be quite significant over the next six, 12, whatever months. What's the single piece of advice that you would give to organizations or marketeers within those organizations about how to deliver absolutely at their best? In the short term, focus on messaging and creativity to get that messaging across um, in a simple and resourceful way. So similar to the videos we were describing earlier. It doesn't take a lot of time or money to create a really good video. It just takes a bit of creativity um, and delivering that very well. So in the short term, messaging creativity is what's going to get you through the next six months. Um, in the longer term, it's really focusing back on the strategy. If you don't have a marketing strategy or your marketing approach is not strategic, it needs that needs to change. Really, really simple and, and so implementable as well. Thank you. Helen, as always, absolutely brilliant. Really, this lovely mix, as we said, of tactical and strategic. So um, on behalf of everyone listening, thank you very much indeed. Really, really, really interesting. Uh, and, and as always, love talking to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.